the year of our Lord, 1607, the Virginia Company of London established Jamestown. Jamestown was swampy and dangerous. Progress through the first few years there was inconsistent at best. I was tasked with establishing a new seat of government upriver from Jamestown on the southern property of the Arohatek people, those under Powhatan. These naturals were friendly to our early efforts and we hoped would enjoy our trade and partnership. With my Lord's permission and the summer heat subdued, near the last of September, my column of 200 men under Captain Brewster sallied through the country of the naturals. We arrived fair and established this new settlement of Henricus, so named for Prince Henry the eldest son of our sovereign king, James I. Within several weeks, the fort's walls were built, ditches dug, and the foundation of our commonwealth of Henrico well laid. And by which system we endured and demonstrated to our investors and competitors that England would claim supremacy in our new England. Once my garrison at Henrico was established on this narrow neck on the north side of our King's River, there I pushed my men with extreme labors, building a guest house for the sick and lame. Mount Malado, or My Lady, was built strong by my order and would be the first hospital of its kind in our America. I was tasked the safekeeping of Powhatan's daughter about the environs of Henricus. This fair woman, the famous Pocahontas, who had befriended Captain John Smith some years before my arrival, was in constant interest by our people. She improved her knowledge of our English language and was the first native woman that converted from the natural's religion to our own Church of England. She took the English name Rebecca. About these years, tobacco emerged from the ground, and we would soon rest our hopes and good fortune with it. At this time, by the emergence of 1614, Master John Rolfe, a kind and hard-working soul, wrote to me a letter of permission to marry Pocahontas. I agreed that this would have a happy effect on both cultures. His labors advanced the first successful cultivation of tobacco as an export crop in the colony of Virginia, and helped make the colony profitable and viable. It was only a matter of time before the good advisors would establish and build the very first college in the New World, that being a land one mile or two northward from my Henricus Fort. This college would be the first of its kind in our America and would be designed to teach both native and English children alike. My fears were realized in eventual action, March 1622, after eight years of pretended peace, hundreds, if not a thousand Powhatan warriors launched a military offensive of mighty skill and resolve. Many of my people, men, women, and children were slain as a result. One heroic action was recorded at Henrico, that being of Mistress Alice Proctor. Without her industrious husband away in England, she, with her child boy, defended the home for three weeks' time. If English gentlewomen are willing to stand up to such hardships for their new Jerusalem, then it affirms to me that all of our people will be of like-minded resolve, and this land will endure and flourish in the years to come. Today, one can enter Henricus Historical Park and discover the world in which the Powhatan people lived, or the homes and industry of Sir Thomas Dale's English colonists. Living history interpreters 
demonstrate the various clothing, job skills, living quarters, and the day-to-day -day lives of the people who first settled here. Visitors are able to touch, smell, hear, and see history in action. The settlement serves tens of thousands of school children each year through their hands-on, SOL-aligned educational programs, working in partnership with the Virginia counties of Chesterfield and Henrico. Be sure to find us on the web at www.henricus.org.